Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video on finite element methods. So as promised, I'm going to cover Newton's quadratic interpolation. So we're going to develop quadratic equations with given data points. So in my last video, we developed the linear equation using this form, right? And now we're going to develop a quadratic equation using this form. So they're pretty similar, but now we just have an extra term, right? So it's just your basic polynomial general form where we have another coefficient and then if we multiply this out we're going to get a second order function which is a quadratic so that's the whole background to where this equation came from um, you can check it out in my last video where I derive and develop the linear equation but now we're just going to be looking at a quadratic equation with one degree higher um, so the basics we're always going to be given three data points so we always have three data points which I've shown over here, um, which is a requirement to come up with a quadratic because in the linear we needed two data points and the quadratic equation we need three data points to develop our quadratic function. So if you look back on my other video, um, I will link it here. You'll see where I derived B0 and B1 because they're going to be literally the exact same thing for the quadratic as they were for the linear. So we know that B naught is f of x naught. So look back at my video, make sure you understand where that came from. And also B1 is the same thing as for the linear equation as well. So again, make sure you understand where these came from and how you got them using the linear function, the linear approximation, because it is the exact same thing, guys. All right, so now we need to figure out what B2 equals. So to get B1, all we did was plug in f of x naught into our linear function and in this case plug it into your quadratic function and you get the same thing and b1 we found f of x1 and then we solve for our b1 our unknown so now to get b2 we need to plug in f of x2 into our quadratic function but plugging that in this is what we get now remember b1 is f of x naught, so this is what we get. Now remember where these guys came from, right? So we have b naught is equal to f of x naught, and b1 is this whole thing here, right? So don't forget that. So then everything else is the same, and now b2 is the only unknown. So we need to solve for b2, right? So we have f of x2, so then we solve for b2, and we get this monstrosity of the equation. So we get this huge thing for b2, and you're probably thinking like, how is this even easier? Why do we do this? This just looks more confusing than what we started with. But really it's not that bad because say for example, if you do this a lot of times in your, in your job or whatever, um, and you wanna interpolate quadratic formulas, you would just need to do this one time in Excel and then you would plug in all of your points and it would solve and develop your equation with any given three data points and it'll approximate it as a quadratic, right? So you really just need to do it one time and then it'll be way more efficient in the end, right? So in the general form, this is what you'll get. And then plugging all your V values into this formula, this is gonna be your end result. And it'll give you a formula with a degree of two, because they have a quadratic. So chances are you're probably gonna be given these uh, B1 and B2 and B0 formulas on a test or whatever because um, I mean I don't know if you'd have to derive it by itself but it's good to know where these came from and that's basically how you just have your general quadratic and your general linear equations plugging in your points x1 and y1 or sorry x0 x1 and x2 solve for your coefficients and then you would just plug them back into your equation and you're gonna get values and then that's gonna be your function of x with a degree of two. So it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, so check my video out uh, with the linear interpolation to just remind yourself where B0 and B1 came from. And then uh, do the derivation yourself and see if you can come up with the same expression for your B2 as I did. So thanks for watching. If you like my content, uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and check out my website. There's a link in the description.